So we're going to have a quick look at a project that I bought at auction. And I'll tell you now, I was prepared to pay 300000 for this. And I only ended up spending 256000 because there was hardly anyone bidding against me. And at the time, I couldn't understand why. But even after a few years of owning it, spending a lot of money refurbishing it, I still don't know why someone didn't overbid me. I mean, I've got one of the best deals in the last five years on the open market. And here's the reason why. I effectively got four properties for the price of one. A commercial unit, a flat above, a two bedroom house, and an unconverted barn in the rear. But after 15 years of property investing, I've never come across a property in need of such love like this one. And the guy that lived there 22 years, his rent was like 300 pound per month. So less than, you know, 50% of a room in one of my HMOs. And you can see by the images, the state of the kitchen and the bathroom, how anyone could live here, it was an absolute nightmare. We actually couldn't get in to see it before we purchased it, because it was such a hoarder of these big mechanical machines, we couldn't get in there. So we ended up doing the, the house after we did the flat. Now the flat was easy. We turned a two bed into a three bed by moving the small kitchen into the large kitchen come diner, creating a really nice usable space, but all importantly, that third bedroom. And a lot of people, even the previous owner, had tried to get planning permission on the shop. But we saw the value leaving the shop as it is and trying to get a tenant, which was a new business, service-based led, that secondary market that we liked to buy in so much. But the real cherry on top was this space and this barn here. Now, the guy in the shop is currently using it temporarily, which I've allowed him to do while we finish converting this farm. Now, even though this is on my doorstep, I actually haven't been here for about a year and I'm really impressed with how much work has been done. And we're pretty much getting towards the second half of this project. But getting planning permission was an absolute nightmare for this because we had to prove that you could get cars through that really narrow passageway and park outside here. Now with some clever 3D modeling and some experts, we were able to prove that parking wasn't an issue. So we sort of overcome that hurdle. And then the second issue was they weren't gonna give residential use as a single dwelling, but they would as an annex linked to the main property, even though technically this is gonna be bigger than the two bedroom house. But what my architect told me is that once we've got the permission and we've done the work and we've got it occupied, we can apply for a certain permitted development to create this as its own separate dwelling, giving us that all important fourth extra property and a much higher end value. The first bit of work that we did was in the ground because we had to get all the drainage correct. And to be honest with you, it was causing us problems with the main building because the drain had literally just disintegrated to nothing. But when we dug down, we realized that we needed an additional sort of pump system. So it cost a bit of extra money, but we ended up getting it all done and then taking a break on this site because we went into the winter months because the next big project was getting the concrete pad down and getting the roof done. Now, when we did the roof, we actually had to rebuild part of the gable end because it was just completely perished. And I was expecting a much larger bill. But when it comes to these old barns, it's normally the fear factor is worse than the reality of it. And these brick barns are easier to work with than the timber barns because you've effectively got the structural walls there and you've just got to build around it using the structural timber that you've got. Now one of the little tricks that I've used on this project is we had two sets of drawings. Now I've done this so many times before, it's a little bit naughty. So you get your drawings that are approved by the planners and then you get your construction drawings which are based on what you want to achieve. Now this effectively is a one bedroom barn with two large storage areas. That's what's been approved. But once the approval has been done, there's nothing to stop us building a larger living room or building a larger kitchen and utilizing a different space as an additional bedroom. So our construction drawings are completely different to what's been approved, but they still remain within the principle and the boundaries of what was approved. So there's very little that can be done after we've done the work. So the other thing to watch out for is don't take existing drawings as gospel when you're submitting your planning application. Now to try and save some money, 
I, instead of having this completely surveyed by my regular architects, I used the existing drawings for them just to make the amendments on. And when we came to doing the construction and putting the windows in the correct place, you can see that we've had to cut through some of the old brickwork and re-brick some of the other part parts up just because the windows weren't sitting in the correct position where they were drawn so we could get the correct head height and the right building rigs. But a minor thing when you're working on a project like this. And this isn't a pile of rubbish. This is Dan's discounted warehouse building materials. So if you're interested, we've got some timbers which have gone up in value so you can do a deal or some old pallets should you want to make some of that lovely trendy pallet furniture or some old polystyrene boxes. It's not rubbish. This is not how our building sites look. This is all part of the plan. And when we come back, we're obviously going to have a much better and cleaner finish.